You know, we've been going through this series uh, designed for relationships, right? Lahat tayo naman are in a relationship in one way or the other, okay? Iba-ibang klase relationships. And God designed it that way. Last week, we learned about the first relationship that is so vital, it's important, is really our relationship with the Lord. To learn to follow Jesus Christ no matter what, right? And so, we have been designed by God. Kaya may, may, for relationship, kaya meron tayo inside of us eh. There's something longing to be connected to someone. There's something longing to be connected to a greater set of relationship, a community. Uh, in fact, after our relationship with God, our second unit is really the family, right? We were born into a family. Wala namang bula dito, no? Bigla na lang sumulpot, parang bula. But in a family, that's a, a mini community, a small community. And the larger community is what we're going to talk about. We were designed for relationship with each other. Not just with God, but with each other, right? That's what we learned from the Trinity. They are a community among themselves, among the Godhead. And it's so important that the, it's a reflection that we were designed in the image of a Trinitarian God, right? And so, as I begin this message, um, sometimes when we, di ba, pag may mga, may mga gathering, may mga kwentuhan as friends, especially if you are a sports enthusiast, meron ba dito sports enthusiast sa basketball? Mga basketball. One of the discussions um, about basketball or any kind of sports is what we call the GOAT. The greatest of all time. Right? The greatest of all time. For example, sa basketball, okay, um, I'm sure some of the ladies can, re- can siguro, <coughs> can, kahit na, no, okay lang, pardon, kasi puro mga men's sports to. No? Pero, for example, sa basketball, sino yung mga GOAT uh, yung mga, mga iniisip nyo na greatest of all times in terms of basketball, okay? Sa NBA, ha, dito kasi, isa lang naman. Joe Warski lang, di ba? Munti ko nang isama. Eh. <laughs> but the argument, threefold yung argument. If you look at all the internet, di ba? Sa basketball, this three, okay? LeBron, who surpassed recently, di ba? Nalampasan niya na si Kareem for all-time most uh, scores, points, in the career, right? Of course, Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, okay? So, sino dito? Tingin nyo ang GOAT sa basketball is LeBron James. All right. Some of the ladies, okay, good. <laughs> Baka hindi nyo nakilala si Michael Jordan and si Kobe. <laughs> sino naman si Kobe? Kobe. Mga Kobe fans. Okay. <laughs> How about MJ, Michael Jordan? Uh, mas marami pa rin MJ, no? Jaworski. Jaworski. Munti ko na talaga isama si Jawo, eh. Sabi ko, kung, may, kung nandiyan si Jawo, siguro lahat kayo, no? Jawo. <laughs> so, how about boxing? Oh, boxing. Tatlo lang naman, eh. Tatlo, I put three. Sa discussions and arguments about the greatest of all times sa boxing, di ba? Itong tatlo lang naman, eh. Uh, yan. Whether it's Pacquiao, okay, whether it's Ali, Muhammad Ali, yung iba sa hindi, na, hindi niya kilala si Ali, no? And of course, Mayweather. Boo, right? But, I mean, <laughs> kasi Pinoy tayo, but yung arguments kasi na undefeated daw siya. Undefeated. But talk about undefeated, there's another guy that's undefeated, si Rocky Marciano. But anyway, sino dito? Mayweather kayo. Pag may nag ng hands. Na, na, na. <laughs> <laughs> pag sabi ni Pastor Larry, pag nag kay kayo Mayweather, lalabas na daw kayo. No, 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 no. It's kidding. <laughs> How about Ali? Muhammad Ali. Alright. Okay. I guess depends sa generation, eh, no? <laughs> Pacquiao. Yun. Siyempre, boxer, Christian pa yan. Okay? <laughs> o ito na lang, para mas less, uh, pero mati ito, mahilig sa tennis. Tennis. Okay, a few of you. Nako. Maybe, ito na lang, kasi the greatest of all time, tamang-tama, sabay-sabay, no? In one generation, tatlo yung argument of the greatest of all time. Whether it's Federer, Djokovic, or si Nadal. So, ni dito, mahilig kayo sa Spanish, kay Nadal. Tingin nyo sa Nadal. So, siya pinakamaraming French Open titles ever. Walang ano, no? 
si Federer. Okay? Okay. How about Djokovic? Wala masyado kay Djokovic. Well, anyway. <laughs> so, regardless argument kung sino, we have a, our own opinions. And why did I put this? Because itong pag-uusapan natin, the passage that we will look at this morning starts with a goat issue. Who is the greatest among the disciples? Yeah. Doon nagsimula. And talking about relationship, especially in a communal level, in a community setting, our relationships with one another, this kind of talk or argument is darating yan eh. Okay? And that's why, pag tinignan natin tong passage na to, we will see how, uh, we will discover how Jesus addresses common relational issues and what kind of attitude should we have in order to build a strong community, okay? So let's jump into uh, our word for this morning found in Mark chapter 9, verses 33 to 40. Mark chapter 9, verses 33 to 40. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent. For on the way, they had argued with one another about who was the goat, who was the greatest. <laughs> and he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, if anyone okay, would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. Okay? Now, he took a child and, uh, wait, yeah. he took a child, put him in the midst, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, whoever receives one child, okay, in my name receives me. And whoever receives me, okay, receives not me, but him who sent me. John said to him, teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, do not stop him, for no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able to soon afterward, uh, will be soon afterward to speak evil of me, for the one who is not against us is for us. Let's bow down for a quick prayer. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who is the living word. I pray to let the word come alive as I ask the Holy Spirit to breathe fresh life into the preaching of your word. I pray for anointing and grace in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so the background, what happened here, this book of Mark actually, and dami nangyari right before this discussion. Itong nangyari na to sa mga pinag-usapan ni Jesus with the disciples. First, okay, nag- if you look at the scripture in Mark chapter 9, so they went to the Mount of Olives for what is known as the Transfiguration. Nag-iba ng anyo. Kumbaga, uh, kumbaga si Jesus, kasama niya si Peter, James, and John. Tatlo lang sila nandoon. And then Jesus, kumbaga parang si Superman, parang binuksan niya ng konti yung kanyang damit. No? Si Clark Kent, di ba? Binuksan niya. Pinakita niya a little bit. Nagulat sila James and uh, Peter and John, nagulat sila, wow, ibang klase ito. So after the transfiguration, they went, uh, they passed through Galilee on the way to Capernaum, and then nandun sila, kinwento ulit ni Jesus for the second time. Kinwento niya sa mga disciples, alam mo guys, um, ang mangyayari kasi, very soon, okay, ibibetray ako. And then, ito torture ako, kukulong ako, ito torture, mamamatay ako, but after three days, I will rise from the dead. So he told this to the disciples. Okay, very, very, siyempre, very serious message yun, di ba? Very sober message. And guess what? Yun yung background, okay? Nung bigla nag-usap yung mga disciples, okay? Sino pang pinamagaling? Kung baga, lumampas lang yung message ni Jesus about, oh, mamamatay na ako, mawawala na ako, guys, ha? Okay? And then discussion nila, sino pang pinamagaling, ha? <laughs> Can you imagine? Bakit ganun? Well, how did this happen? Okay? And how did they react? Ito sabi nila, di ba? And sabi sa verse, What were you discussing on the way? Sabi ni Jesus sa kanila. But they kept silent. Nahiya sila. Because they argued about one another, Who is the greatest? Who is the greatest? Now, 
it's easy to pagalitan yung mga disciples, grabe naman kayo. Hindi naman kayo sensitive, no? Nagsishare na nga si Jesus na mamamatay na nga siya. Ganyan pa pinag-usapan niyo. Well, probably because they came from the Mount of Transfiguration. Again, this is just me, no? This is my divine conjecture, if you may. My personal conjecture of possibly how the argument started. Kasi galing yung tatlo sa Mount of Olives sa Transfiguration. Diba? And so, pagbaba nila, Siguro tinanong ng mga disciples, oh, sa kanya nagaling, ano nangyari? Sabi ni Peter, James, and John, alam mo, sabi ni Jesus, pinigyan kami ng NDA. Sabi niya, don't tell anyone kung ano nangyari. Okay? So, alam nyo, baka later on, baka payagan kami ni Jesus, alam mo, close kami, tatlo kami, tatlo kami, close kami kay Jesus eh. Baka later on, pag gumawa na kami ng gospel, baka mabasa nyo na lang kung ano nangyari talaga. <laughs> I mean, all kinds of things. So, bigla nagkaroon ng argument. Talaga? Ganun ba? Sino ba talaga sa inyong time mas ang pinakamagaling? Ikaw ba? O si John ba? O si James? Sabi niya kay Peter. Diba? I mean, all kinds of arguments. But, can you imagine the context? Sineshare na mamamatay ka na. <laughs> kung bakit, this is the, malapit na yung, malapit na yung uh, Passion Week and then, this kind of this, this, uh, this discussion. Now, do you know what that tells us? In any kind of community, in any kind of group relationship, one danger that people can fall into is what I call the comparison trap. The comparison trap. In any kind of relationship. Because all our lives, we have always been compared. You have always been compared. Society reinforces this to us. Sa pamilya pa lang eh. Di ba? Uy, bakit ganyan yung si kuya, ganito, dapat magaling ka rin, ha? I remember because I went to the same high school as my two elder brothers. So ako yung third boy. So tatlo kami, di ba? So pagdating sa akin, oh, gore. Kaano mo si, you know, si James at saka si Eric, yung dalawang brothers ko, Oh, dapat magaling ka rin eh, kasi magaling mga kapatid mo. So, ganun, kumbaga, kaya-compare ka na kaagad, di ba? <laughs> Jeng was saying the same thing about, um, they, they, she went to the same high school as um, yung, an, yung brother niya, si Omeng, who's our missionary in, ano, <coughs> in London. Sabi sa kanya, Oy, grabe, dapat, eh, I think, valedictorian ba si Omeng? Valedictorian, brother niya. So, alagang inaano, binabantayan siya ng teacher. Tsaka sinasabihin niya, dapat mas magaling ka o kasing galing ka na kapatid mo. I mean, can you imagine? <clears throat> sa familia pa lang, ganun. Sa school, ganun na. Right? Dapat first honor ka rin kasi first honor si ganito. O pag, pag hindi ka naging ganyan, pag hindi ka nag-produce, okay? bakit, bakit number three ka lang sa board exam? Eh yung kapatid mo, number one. Okay? I mean, society always put a value na, oh, ikaw, number one to, ikaw, number 20 ka lang. O ikaw, hindi ka nga umabot, wala ka nga, nandun ka sa dulo. Ng, right? There's always a comparison. Now, pati sa work, ganun naman yun eh. All our lives, we are being evaluated. So don't get me wrong, achievement and success has its place. But, if it's not in an environment of support and affirmation, it will always breed insecurity. It will always breed performance orientation. It will always breed perfectionism rather than excellence. Kalangan ganito ka, kasi ganito yan. In fact, one pastor, okay, not here, huh? or not, not, not from the Philippines na lang, para mas madali, was confiding itong, yung insecurity niya as a young pastor. Um, because of this comparison trap. Um, sabi niya kasi, early on, as a young pastor, sometimes he would invite guest uh, preachers. Right? And of course, syempre, pag may guest preacher, the better the preacher is in preaching. Grabe ang word. Anointed. The better others do, sabi niya, the worse it might look on you. <laughs> and the worse for them, the better for him. May ganong side, kahit gusto niya, syempre, gusto niya anointed word, at the back of his mind, yun daw naglalaro. 
So I want them, sabi niya, ito yung dilemma niya. He wanted them to do well, but at the same time, sabi niya, if he was completely honest, I don't want them to do too well. <laughs> yung okay lang, siguro mas magaling lang konti sa akin. <laughs> sabi niya, because it might reflect poorly on him. Until, sinabi Lord sa kanya, you know what? Learn to seek the shadow. Kasi daw baka ma-overshadow siya nung guest speaker. <laughs> right? Sabi niya, sabi ni Lord sa kanya, learn to seek the shadows. Because sabi niya, sabi ni Lord sa kanya, it's like a sunflower. Sunflowers face the east where the sun is. Okay? It, because it craves the praise, the adoration of people. We want the, all the credit. But guess what? You don't get honor by seeking honor. You get honor by giving honor. In fact, yun na sabi ni Jesus in Luke chapter 14 in another storyline, sabi niya, when you are invited to a wedding banquet, do not sit in the place of honor. Okay? In case someone more distinguished than you has been invited, then the host who has invited both of you will come and tell you, give this man your seat. And in humiliation, you will have to take the last place. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Kung ina-assume mo na. Marami kasi tante mahili mag-assume, di ba? Assume ako. Ako yung pinakamagaling. So dyan ako. Sa tabi. Sa right hand. Nung, uh, nung host. Pero, I mean, ano lang naman yan, di ba? May protocol yan eh. For example, dumating yung presidente. Saan mo papakaupo yung presidente? Okay? Siyempre, doon sa highest honor. Seat of highest honor. Eh, pag nandun ka, papaalising ka. Ilang sabi ni Jesus eh. So, it's better daw you, that you play, place yourself on the least. Doon ka sa dulo. And let others tell you, doon ka nalang umupo katabi ng host. Rather than paupuin ka and be humiliated. Di ba? You will experience humiliation when you have to take the last place. So, we have a choice. We have a choice. We can either be humiliated or we, have to, or we can learn to humble ourselves. It's easier to humble yourself and let God exalt you rather than exalt yourself and let God humble you. <laughs> right? So, that's why the key to getting out of this comparison trap is what Jesus tells us, humility. You know what humility, what declaration, what statement you need to say to yourself to practice this? You need to tell, uh, ito lang, practice natin ngayon, ha? tell your seatmate, katabi mo, you are not the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> you see, walking in a spiritual community, paradoxical yan eh. It's about you, but it's also not about you. <laughs> right? It's about you because you have a place there. God placed you there, and you have a unique role. Everyone. But it's not about you. It's about Jesus, right? Listen. Kaya nga paradoxical. It's about you, but it's not about you. Let me tell you first. Para naman, para naman uh, magkaroon tayo, tumaas yung self-esteem natin. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, let me tell you, God has made you and given you a destiny for greatness. You have a destiny of greatness. God has made you to walk in greatness. To be great. Kaya nga, para nang bawiin do sa katabi mo. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, you look great. <laughs> Everyone, lahat tayo. God has made us to be great. But let me tell you, there is only one who is the greatest. The greatest of all time, okay, actually, is not a goat. 
It's a lamb, Jesus Christ. All of us, God has made great, but there's only one greatest, and that's Jesus Christ, right? And when we learn our place, when we learn, that's part of humility, understanding our place, where God, how God has made us, and where God has placed us, right? So, how do we practice humility? Anong sabi ni Jesus? Basa. <laughs> and he said to them, if anyone would be first, he must be what? He must be last of all and servant of all. Grabe. The practical way of expressing humility is by serving. Serving everyone. Kaya nga, I want to honor lahat ng mga volunteers natin, no? Yung mga nasa camera, yung nasa likod, yung hindi napapansin, I want you to honor them. <laughs> They're serving you. They're serving us. They're serving the Lord first and foremost. And that's very important. Okay? I know many of them, they have great careers. They're you know, amazing businessmen. I mean, all of that. But they put you first. They put God first and they put you first. Sabi ni Jesus, Jesus taught that greatness comes from what? Serving other people. Serving other people. That's what a lot of people, get this, most people wait to do, before they do something wrong, they wait until no one is watching. Right? And a lot of people, when they want to do something right, they wait when a lot of people are watching. Right? <laughs> and let me tell you, that's not just human nature. That's sin nature. Because it's not natural us, for us to humble ourselves and to serve people. In fact, even for me, okay, I know that God has changed me because one day, I, I just, no na saved na ako, because ah, we, we live, but, you know, mga helpers and all of that, and people take, pero, nung, nung, na, when God changed me and transformed me, that's one of the things. I wanted to serve my family. Kaya bigla ako naghugas ng mga plato and all of that. So, nasyak yung mga ano, kung nangyari sa'yo? <laughs> Alam mo yun? So, it's something natural that comes out. It's not part of human nature. It's part of the divine nature that God has imparted when we are rebirthed, when we are reborn into His kingdom. Okay? Our human nature craves for self-glorification. Sabi ni Jesus, no. You see, there are no great men and women of God, only humble servants whom God has chosen to use greatly. Okay? When we humble ourselves, God will use you more. <laughs> when you say, Lord, I don't care. Okay? In fact, there's another pastor who, when he started his ministry, okay, when he started the church, his ministry, this is the deal he made with God. Sabi niya, Lord, I don't, if I don't take the credit, everything I do, I won't take the credit. Because if I don't take the credit, then I, then I also don't have to take the blame. In other words, Lord, ikaw naman ito eh. I won't get any credit for this. It's all the Lord. So pag may problema, si Lord rin yan. <laughs> but if you take all the credit, get, guess who gets all the blame also? You. Right? <clears throat> That's why I don't think it's here, no? But Philippians chapter 2, I believe, best encapsulate, encapsulates this. Philippians 2, verses 3 to 4. Um, do nothing from selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Okay? That's a very, very important scripture. I think, no, don't think, but take note of that. Philippians chapter 2, okay, verses 3 to 4 is our attitude. 
Okay. So how do we apply this? Well, this week, serve. For example, serve your family. You see, serve family. Serve your, maybe in your office, community, when no one is watching. <laughs> Iba yun. Okay? Magulot na lang. Ano nangyari? But ayos na yung mga, but ayos na yung mga, malinis na yung plato. Bakit ayos na lahat? Right? Or even in the office, when no one is watching. Maybe there's a CCTV, but doesn't matter. When no one is watching, serve. When you don't get the credit, serve. That's how you apply this. That's how you get, of the, get out of the comparison tra- trap when you humble yourself. When you don't get credit or you won't get noticed. Okay? Na kahit wala na dun sa appraisal mo, kahit hindi na makita sa appraisal report mo sa office, okay lang yun. You know why? Because there are, there's a greater appraiser in heaven watching over you. And his reward is greater than the reward you will receive here on earth. Okay? Now, the comparison trap. It's very, very important to be aware of that. That's why humility. But there's another danger that Jesus exposes here. And that I call this the exclusivity trap. The exclusivity trap. Okay? Um, Ito naman, this is the Apostle John saying, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name. And we tried to stop him because he was not following us. Hindi siya kasama sa tropa. Jesus said, do not stop him. Okay? Uh, wait, yeah. Jesus said, do not stop him for no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able to soon afterward to speak evil of me. For the one who is not against us is for us. Exclusivity, especially in a church community setting or any kind, uh, it's very, very, it's a danger. It's a trap. Okay? But you know what? The reason why it's hard for us to get out of this is because society puts value in exclusivity in different contexts. For example, it produces social status, right? When something becomes rare or an exclusive item, it could raise your social status. Wow, ako lang meron nito. Sila wala. Your self-worth or self-esteem, okay? For example, if you own this, right? An exclusive car. If you drive this, Sobrang taas ng pogi points mo bigla. Right? Bigla ang guwapo mo bigla. <laughs> Social status. Self-worth. Or, for example, in a business. Mga businessman natin, right? It could be of a business advantage. Exclusivity. Exclusivity. Like, for example, if you have an exclusive technology, Ikaw, ikaw lang meron on, then everyone could go to you. Exclusivity, right? Uh, for example, anyone want to travel to space or to Mars? <laughs> Ako, gusto ko mag-travel sa space. There's only one company that does that right now or trying to do that, SpaceX, si Elon Musk. Okay, I don't know if you like, whether you like him or not, what he's doing is, you know, I want to travel to the space. <laughs> to Mars. Gusto niyang gawin yun. Hopefully in my lifetime. <laughs> it's a business advantage. Siya lang gumagawa nun eh. So, if no one else is doing, and, uh, doing it, right? The exclusivity is a business advantage. Ano pa? Brand recognition. Exclusivity produces brand recognition. It produces customer loyalty. Kaya nga, the richest man in the world today, alam mo kung sino, the owner of this one. I think the, what's the name? Arno family. Tilapasan niya. Mga owner ng Hermes, LV, sila yon. The richest person in the world. Brand recognition. And, again, kung may-ari kayo ng Ferrari, 
Kung may ari ka ng SpaceX or meron ka LV, I'm not saying that's bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you're bad, that's bad. But you know what? Exclusivity raises the value of a commodity but diminishes the value of church community. When a group of people whom God has called to be inclusive suddenly becomes exclusive and say, hindi kayo pwede dito. Kami lang to. It destroys the very purpose of why Jesus came here. Jesus came here because God so loved the world, the world. Right? That's why exclusivity can be a trap. Again, there are some contexts where exclusivity, even in the Christian context, is good. But in church community, I believe it can be a trap. In fact, sabi ni John, di ba? John, this is John the Apostle. Siya yung nag- nag-write ng the Gospel of John and three epistles, right? Siya sa mulat. In fact, Revelation, siya sa mulat. Siya mismo. He fell into this trap. Di ba? Sabi niya, you know what? Jesus, merong isa doon, nagka-cast out ng demon, pero hindi siya kasama sa tropa natin. Okay? Gusto mo bang i rebuke namin siya? <laughs> In other words, the exclusivity trap can sound like this. We're the only ones doing the work. Or kami yung pinakamagaling. Or this way is the better way. Or our way. Right? Eh kung iba, yung methodology. Sabi ba ni Jesus, o oh, nga no, i-rebuke mo nga, tawagin mo nga yan, pagkalitan mo nga dapat, samama na lang siya dito. No, 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 no. Jesus did not do that. But this is a common trap because even in the Old Testament, this happened. Do you know what? Si Joshua, I mean, we love Joshua, right? But Joshua fell into the same trap. In Numbers chapter 11, Sabi ni Moses, okay, sabi ni Lord kay Moses, Moses, I'm going to impart the Holy Spirit with you, but I want you to lay hands on 70 elders. Call them into the mountain, to the hill with you, and lay hands on them and impart to them and pray for them. So pinatawag ni Joshua, nandun silang lahat. You can read this in number, Numbers 11. No? So nung impart na, the, the Bible says, the Spirit of God, okay, fell on the 70 elders kasama ni Moses. And they began to prophesy yung mga kasama ni Moses doon. Pero, sabi ni Joshua, Moses, Moses, merong dalawa, hindi nakasama dito, hindi nakaakyat, pero they began to prophesy, nandun sa camp, nagpa-prophesy sila. Gusto mong pagalitan ko na rin? <laughs> Kasi nagpa-prophesy, pero wala dito. Ano sabi ni Moses? Are you jealous for my sake? <laughs> sabi niya, if it were up to me, I wish everyone would prophesy. In other words, Joshua, concerned ka ba talaga sa akin o is sa iyo? Sino ba may problema? Ako okay lang sa akin. In fact, gusto ko lahat ng prophesy. Baka ikaw may issue of exclusivity. Kasi nga, hindi siya kasama sa tropa. Eh. Hindi siya kasama dito. May ginagawa siya iba pa. Eh, mukhang gine-bless rin ni Lord. In a church community, exclusivity can be a trap. We have to be very careful. You have to be aware of that. In other words, sabihin mo sa sarili mo, or sabihin mo sa katabi mo, this is not about you. <laughs> yes, this is about you. Church community is about you. That's why you have to be there. <laughs> you have to be part of the church community. But it's also not about you. If things aren't done a particular way, right? It's Okay. As long as it is disruptive and heretical and all of that, right? And divisive. Kung iba ng konte, okay lang yun. Sabi ni Jesus yun, right? If the person is not against us, okay lang yun. He is for us. That's why the key to getting out of exclusivity is to be inclusive. To be inclusive, right? Inclusivity is very important. Ay na magfunction. Iko na lang. Inclusivity. John thought yung exclusive group nila sila lang ang pwedeng mag-cast out ng demons. 
Who of you here has ever experienced casting out demons? Or not casting out, kahit na kasama lang kayo, pero naka-experience na kayo. All right, good. Several of you, right? Nakaiba experience. I remember the first time naka-experience ako of someone casting out demons, it was on a Sunday service. It's, it's a, it was in a worship service when the church was small pa lang. Um, anong nangyari, it was the day after a youth camp. Do sa youth camp, nung Saturday, Sunday ito. Yung Saturday, the, I think the day before, merong isang Satanist na na-save, na-baptize doon. And nags- worship sa Sunday service, eh ako yung usher, kami ni Pastor Michael yung usher. Bigla nagmamanifest yung guy. Siya kami, ano gagawin natin? So sabi nila, dali na lang sa likod. So ganun kami, no? So biglang, kung ano na ginagawa, no? Uh, in, uh, tinanong, what's your name? Tinatanong, kinakausap yung demonyo. Pero sinabi niya, what's your name? Sabi niya, Enrico. Enrico. Sabi niya, in the name of Jesus, Enrico. I cast you out in Jesus' name. Hindi lumalabas. So sabi namin doon sa nag-minister, bro, pangalan yata niya yun. Baka mawala yung identity pag kinasa out mo. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, we witnessed all kinds of, you know, meron ng isang beses. Pinapunta ni Pastor Winston sa pusa. I mean, all kinds of things. But imagine this. Can you imagine if and the authority to cast out demons remained on the 12th? Sa kanila lang. Hindi nang tayo kasalin lahat. Right? Ano mangyayari sa atin ngayon? Baka i-overpower tayo ngayon, right? That's why Jesus said, okay, All authority has been given to me. Okay? Therefore, go and make disciples. And in my name, you will cast out demons. It's not exclusive. Inclusive for all who follow him. And I'm glad na hindi la exclusive yung power and authority ni Jesus Christ. Church community has always been inclusive. Let me tell you, everyone is welcome in the church. Kahit ano pang problema mo, kahit satanista ka pa, drug addict, <laughs> kahit, you know, uh, lasingero, lahat, it's for every all. It's for every all. You are welcome here. You are welcome to the church. For everyone. Okay? So, huwag kayong pumili ng tao. You can invite them to church. Because the church is inclusive. Hopefully, yung victory group nyo, inclusive. Huwag kayong maging exclusive sa victory group nyo, sa small group nyo. Because pag yung exclusive ka, ang tao doon is ingrown. Okay? Ingrown. Naka-explain ka na ba ng ingrown? Sakit nun, di ba? <laughs> Kasi hindi sila nag outreach sila sila. Kami-kami na lang dito. Mag-fellowship na lang tayo. That's why humility, as I try to wrap this up, humility and inclusivity are really vital components in a healthy church community. Be inclusive. Invite people. Invite your friends, invite your enemies, lahat, invite mo. <laughs> right? In your VG. And you know what? When those two components of humility and inclusivity, you know what's the picture that will happen? The Spirit of God, the presence of God is drawn when we have those attitudes. That's why, I don't know if you've heard of what happened in Asbury. The Asbury is uh, a seminary in Kentucky. There was an awakening or a revival, the Asbury revival, where in chapel service nila, okay, bigla nagstay, I think seven people or eight people, began to linger and began to worship God. Pagkatapos na, hating gabi na, and then, nagspill over na, kinabukasan, nandun pa rin sila, and people began to join. The students, student-led, began to confess, began to know their heart for God, their hunger for God. They began, oh, it's, it's really spontaneous. But it was all, it's a nameless revival outpouring. 
because they refuse. It lasted for, I think, three, two weeks or three weeks. 24 hours of worship and prayer. A lot of people came there. Prominent pastors, national, international ministries came there and wanted to lead one of the night meetings, worship meetings. But sabi na no, it's all going to be student-led. The nameless, faceless people are the ones that God chose to pour out His Spirit in a time where people are so hungry but people are so broken. God's Spirit are drawn to those, to those who are humble, those who are broken and contrite in spirit. Even up to now, wala. No one knew who led that. Kasi walang, walang pangalan eh. But you know who really led that? It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And that's a picture. If we let humility and inclusivity be our guiding attitudes. Your small group nyo, in the church, the presence of God will come here and begin to touch and have genuine encounters with the Lord. And I'd like to invite the people to worship King to come up. Listen, as I end, we're going to worship in a while. But let me tell you, Jesus modeled this about humility. In the Passion Week, diba, sinabi niya na, one of you will betray me. And you know what happened? After sinabi niya yan, he washed the disciples' feet, even Judah's feet. Instead of putting out crown, he put on a towel and knelt and washed the feet of his disciples. Humility. You know, Jesus accepts us the way we are. Kaya nga inclusive eh. That's why you can invite everyone. But you know what? When you come here, and when you have an encounter with the Lord, Jesus does not leave you the way you are. You know why we tell people, please invite your friends, lahat, kahit sino. Sometimes we tell people, oh, punta ka sa church because Jesus holds the key to all your, the answer to all your problems. Let me tell you, let me correct that. The reason why we tell you to invite people is not because Jesus holds the answer to all your problems. It is because Jesus is the answer to all your problems. It's a person that we want you to have an encounter. And as we worship, we're going to worship. I want everyone to stand up. And whatever it is, I want us to just humble ourselves. Whatever you feel is like, Lord, parang ganun ako. If we'll be honest, there are times, even pastors can be, because of our insecurity, oh, sana, hindi siya masyado magaling. Kasi baka mawala na ang trabaho. Kahit sa office, ganun tayo, di ba? Let's surrender all to God. And let's humble ourselves. Be inclusive. Humility and inclusivity. Let's worship God.
your church. This is your church, God built in Jesus cornerstone God attitude of prayer and I do believe that um, it's never an, it's never an accident it's never an accident that yesterday we just had um, a refresher a refresher if, if 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 I may use that word a refresher for uh, some leaders new and old a uh, refresher on being being a good disciple which is opening our lives not only that but being relevant Nadia but also relational Sabi ko nga nung nag-start kami, sabi ko, parang ano to, parang oxymoron na pag-usapan natin um, relational discipleship. Well, you know what? I do believe, as Pastor Edgar said, we are, we on our own, meron tayong kanya-kanyang mga ano eh, mga, mga comfort levels, we have preferences, but thank you Pastor Edgar for reminding us, this is God's church, this is His church. And He wants all of us to, to be open, to be inclusive, and not to be exclusive. Thank you for reminding us. Thank you for reminding us that this is God's church. And we, are His, we as His people, we have to bear witness in our lives of how open we should be to everyone. You know, I remember early on, back in 2007, yung prayer ni Pastor Dennis, I wasn't still in full-time Volunteer pa lang ako noon, naalala ko. Yung mga prayer niya, natakot ako. Sabi niya, Pastor Edgar, hindi ko, sinare niya yun. Sabi niya, Lord, dalhin mo dito yung mga drug addict. Lord, dalhin mo dito yung mga drug pusher. Napatingin ako sa kanya. Lord, dalhin mo dito yung mga, yung mga gay, lesbian. Tinawag niya talaga. Those na, 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 na naghahanap ng magulang. Natakot ako <laughs> doon sa prayer niya. But you know what? Thinking about it now. That is where those people have to be here in this church. Kailangan nandito sila. Alam mo kung pwedeng nasa look, naka-look out tayo, kailangan ganun yung attitude po natin, mga kapatid. Kung yung mga kasama natin dito, friends na natin, na okay, body-body tayo, as in, kumbaya, my Lord. Tayo-tayo eh, na lang. We're not doing justice to God's church. It is precisely that reason that I gave my life to Jesus. Because I was welcome in this church. As dirty, as murky, as... Ni ako, ayaw ko yung sarili ko that time eh. But thanks be to God that I was welcome in this church. Let's pray right now. Father, I know it would hurt at times 
I know Lord God at times Lord na parang hindi talaga namin alam paano ayaw namin but Lord thank you that you will give us the grace more than the grace you will even give us the opportunity Lord even I pray right now Lord God Lord pag naging kalos na yung puso namin Lord make it as soft as flesh right now Lord we repent it's never about who we are and our preferences Lord God it's all about you Lord, sana yun yung araw-araw papaalalahanin mo sa amin. This is all about you. Our lives as a worship unto you, Lord God. Lord, our worship, Lord God, is being Lord being sent out, being missional, Lord God. In doing the work, Lord, that you have started. And not only that, that you will finish, Lord God. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will give us this opportunity, Father. Not just to minister, to invite, to be, in, to be inclusive, to be welcoming, Lord God. And Lord, na malaman namin, Lord, na tinawag mo kami dito sa church nito, bahay na namin to, kapamilya na kami dito, Lord God. That's why we will welcome people, Lord God. We will welcome them. We will show them love. We will show them compassion. We will show them mercy, Lord God. Lord, give us a boldness. It one invitation, one invitation, one one coffee, one call, one text, one sorry. But Lord, we pray, Lord, that we will be compelled. Because first and foremost, Lord God, you showed us that love, that genuine love. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, let's continue to worship. Let's continue to pray. Pastor Dave. You know, while Pastor Edgar was messaging or sharing, I just feel like maybe for some of us, the message is about being open, you know, inviting everyone. You and me are invited. But maybe for some of us, yung reason kung bakit ang hirap you know, mag-open up na uli, eh kasi nasakta na tayo. Like we've heard already how, you know, Jesus wants all of us to come here, come to Him. But, you know, in all honesty, we've all experienced opening ourselves up, give our trust only for that trust to be broken. Isn't it true? Whether it's inside the church or outside the church, whether it's a Christian, a professing Christian, or even not a Christian. Who among here you've experienced that? You've given trust and trust was broken, right? That's why it's so hard. Kaya sabi kanina ni Pastor Edgar about, you know, being inclusive. And in the back of our minds, maybe for some of you, you're thinking, ah, trinay ko na yan eh. Nasaktan ako uli eh. Nasaktan ako eh. But I want to tell you something. It's so painful, it is. And trust is broken. But you know what's another thing that's painful? Is trying to show that you are strong and you don't need help even though you really do need help and you need the work of God. Nakakapagod po yun. Kaya nga nakakapagod ang insecurity, di ba? Nakatingin ka lagi. Kaya nga nakakapagod yung trying to keep up with the other people. And it's exa- it is exactly that kind of religion that God is against. And I want to share this verse to you, to all of you. And, and this is the good news of God. God doesn't want us to live in that kind of trap. Kaya nga siya trap eh. Titingin ka, feeling mo ang galing mo. Titingin ka sa kabila, ay mas magaling pala siya. Titingin siya, gusto kong, ay ayoko kasi nasaktan niya ako. Pero kailangan ko ng tulong niya. Pero wag muna. It is so tiring. Now this is the good news for you. God knows that wall. God knows the walls you've been putting up. But in Matthew 11 verse 18, it's a very famous verse. It says here, Come to me, all of you who labor and are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. The rest is not just physical rest. The rest is the freedom from the comparison trap that we sometimes put ourselves to. The freedom to be known by God. Kaya po namatay si Jesus sa cross para tanggalin yung bigat na yan. So that you can learn how to trust again and to be healed of that. With all heads bowed and eyes closed, if that's you, and you're saying you need healing right now, healing once again to trust and to open up, healing from trauma of past experiences, healing and freedom 
from that feeling of being so tired of trying to put yourself together. If that's you, can you raise your right hand? I want to pray for you. See that hand? Yes. Thank you, Lord, for these hands. Lord, right now we ask, I want to pray for you. Lord, freedom from that. Help us to trust once again, first and foremost to you, Jesus, and then to the people you've given us, the people in this church community. Lord, tulungan nyo kami magtiwala uli, mag-open up, hindi maging suspicious. Tulungan nyo uli kami magmahal, tulungan nyo uli kami mag-serve, tulungan nyo uli kami umintindi. Tulungan nyo po uli kami, Lord God, that we will be able to share the burdens, oh God. Lord, right now, you are revitalizing, reviving those key relationships. May you bless us. Healing right now to flow. In your own words, can you just say that? Ko ano man yun, ko ano man yung nakasakit sa inyo in the past. I know it's not a one-time thing, but it is a process. And I want to encourage you to go through this process of healing. In your own words, pray right now. Lord, I release this. I release this burden. I release this uncomfortable uncomf feeling. I release mistrust. And I receive this message that comes from you. Lord, I humble myself. In Jesus' name. You can put down your hands. We're so excited. For everyone who raised your hands, I want to encourage you, you know, slowly, you know, connect. It can be as simple as asking prayers. So that's why afterwards, if you, uh, there's this uh, prayer booth there, could go ahead and go there and just ask for prayers. Okay, sige, kung medyo uncomfortable ka pang mag-connect sa victory group or one-to-one, -one, it's okay. Maybe that's the first step. Ask prayers. Humility. Diba? It takes humility to ask prayers. Kasi kung hindi ka humble, di mo kailan ng prayers. Okay? But maybe some of you, you do need that. You could go ahead there. I, me and some of the pastors and leaders and ministers will be there. Another thing, this is an open invitation, especially for all the women. Okay, uh, inside this church, we will have our uh, women's, uh, so awkward coming from me, no? <laughs> okay. uh, a woman's uh, talk. I'm not there, don't worry. <laughs> My wife will be there. I want to invite all the women here, a community for women, kape, chaa, chika. Okay, um, it's going to be from 7 to 12 midnight. The joke lang. 7 to... Okay. Uh, matagal na kasi mag-usap ata eh. Uh, tayo mga lalaki, mag-PS5 na lang tayo. Uh, <laughs> but uh, for the, for the uh, women, it's free. You don't have to... Uh, there's no payment. It's also open for all. So if you have a friend, uh, wherever you can invite there. And this is a great application for this message as well. Okay, so in short, everyone's included. So is that good? Okay, so uh, booth here for prayers. Any one of you need prayers? And then this one on uh, Wednesday this week. Can we all stretch our hands as we, as I send all of us out. Lord, with that message of humility, Lord, we humbly ask that your spirit would send us out so that we will make an impact wherever we are. Lord, allow us to invite, to pray for someone, to um, share the gospel to someone, or even yung sinasabi ni Pastor Edgar, to serve when no one else is looking. Lord, may we be sent out by the power of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless all of us here. See you next week. If you need prayers. Oh, hi guys! Welcome to our Victory Greenhouse YouTube channel. Now, if you are here, we hope that today's message will bless you, it'll encourage you, it'll speak life to you. But more than the message itself, we would like to encourage you to be part of our church community. And you can get connected through discipleship. And we want to invite you to be part of one of our Victory groups. If you're interested, please do let us know. You can comment, you can message us, you can text us. Whatever, just let us know how you want to get connected so that we can plug you in. God bless you.